welcome alive here to Racing House, but before the green flag, uh, green flag being the Daytona 500 next weekend, um, we're unofficially back. That's why I'm not in the racing hot spot attire, kind of in my off season. Yeah, I was gonna ask, but but I don't like you like to brag, so brag about what? Anyways, um, but you're the official Belmont Athletic videographer. Video. Good, good video job. Yeah. <laughs> it's a mouthful, isn't it? A little bit. All right. So on this week's show, we're just gonna talk about the Sprint Unlimited Daytona 500 qualifying Budweiser duels lineup. Racing Hotspot Points Championship, and then the Speed Week schedule, um, as well as notes that he's been taking most of the weekend. Um, so it's not Trying. Trying. it's not a normal show lineup. Usually we'd have the Motorsport and 60 and all the other stuff, but because we're pre-season, so to speak, yep. we're just kind of covering the basics. So right into things here, we'll go through the top five and then we'll go to your notes. Um, Sprint Unlimited was raced Saturday night at Daytona International Speedway. I don't know if you see that, but you know, it was a helpless effort. Um, Matt Kenseth won the race. Uh, I think that was the only car on the track that was unscathed. Um, Kyle Larson finished fifth. Casey Mears finished fourth. Carl Edwards finished third. And Martin Truex Jr. finished second. Like I said, I feel like Kenseth is the only car that didn't have a dent or anything in it. I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, everybody else was. Well, that's because he stayed out in front most of the time. Uh, but Edwards, though, what a great start to a new team. No, yeah. no, that's 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 really really good. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. Um, but first twenty five laps, we went to the competition caution because Keslowski went through the infield grass. I guess he felt like they ne he needed to mow a little bit. He um, was taken out, wasn't he? Was it Larson? Yeah, Larson. Yeah. Larson got another back it was, a, it was one of the young the kids that that took him out. Yeah, but in all honesty, the way I looked at it afterwards was he kind of take evasive action to go through the grass instead of trying to save it like McMurray did and go back into the field. Because he was toward the front. So when he went down, he kind of just went, let me try to get away from the field. Yes, I'm going to destroy my car. Me personally, I think I would have went away from the field. Yeah. It I, doesn't have good results when you come back up. Yeah, exactly. And he did come back up, but toward the back of the field where everyone was like, <laughs> hit the pit to, road. Or, to stop, yeah. Uh, hit the pit road or slam the brake. Um, then as, after that, we kind of went into a caution fever type. Um, it was a green flag for 10 or 15 laps, then a wreck, and then green flag maybe 5 or 10 laps, and then a wreck, and then toward the end it was like 1 or 2, and then a wreck, and yeah. it kind of showed true Daytona. Yeah. But, and it wasn't like a huge big one. It was with McMurray, but... At the end, we only had like less than ten cars, but it was over the course of many wrecks, not just. Yeah, it was actually the, the last uh, run there was hilarious. Actually, I think I made a note of that. Yeah, twelve of, twelve of twenty-five with four to go. That's what it was down to. Twelve cars. That that's unbelievable. Uh, it's less than half the field. Yeah, that. It was uh, it was pretty funny to watch them restart. <laughs> This little group, tiny group of cars on a two and a half mile track. Well, if you remember correctly, last year it was like eight cars. So it was like four rows. Yeah. And it's like, well, and I actually I didn't note it, but in I, my dad and I were watching, and I'm like, if they lose five more cars, we'll break a break an unlimited record, because <laughs> last year was eight cars. If they lost five more, then it would have been seven, and least amount of cars to finish. Uh, the super speedway races, in my opinion, have gotten to the point where it's, if you're watching the whole race, you're watching it to, to watch crashes. Because nothing's going to matter until that last lap. Mm -hmm. And it seems like it always changes. So you're not, you know, you're, you're really not watching a whole race to see where everybody gets. You watch a whole race to see who doesn't make it to the end. Yeah. That's pretty much what it comes <laughs> exactly. down to. Exactly. Whereas other tracks, it's... All right, if he does this, he can do this. But if yeah, he does that, this more. happens. At Talladega and Daytona, it's kind of like if he survives the wreck, <laughs> well, what's the, he could try to make it. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank on this word, but uh, the they use it just about every race. They Equalizer. Use, Great no, no, no. The um, what they the strategies and P whatnot. Uh, pitch strategy, fuel strategy. Yeah, it's there's there's no, what's there's nothing a super speed way to bother with. There's, yeah. there's no strategy. Everyone comes in at the same time. Hope for the best and try to make it through. That's pretty much what it comes down to. Really, the only strategy there is to pitting is coming in with people. This way you're not alone. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that that never... Uh, of course, you have the spotters, but 
if you're the leader, how do you know that? You're off turn four, you're like, anybody going, anybody going, anybody going? Oh, people are going, let's go! <laughs> Just, I don't know. But, um... Yeah, it's, it's like I said, there is no strategy to it anymore. It's get yourself a good car. Most of the strategy happens with your setup. And, you know, and, and surviving. And, and then surviving, exactly. Yeah, and even the best, like Tony Stewart, he had a great... You made a note on it. Tony Stewart had a great opening and then the McMurray wreck. Yeah. Well, Tony, right he, off the bat, that was like the first two laps past, what, 20 cars or yeah, something? Yeah, he went <laughs> from like, like 24th to 8th yeah, in like five laps. Pretty, but, pretty impressive right off the bat. Yeah, and then that McMurray wreck, he didn't really get involved other than a spin out through the grass. And then I think it was Kyle Busch who got into the back of him off turn two, yeah. causing him to go into Biffle, which Biffle then went head first into the wall. And then, yeah, it was a hard hit, yeah. too. Oh, and then, Biffle's, oh, mm. wow. And then Bush. He gets into Stewart. I'm wondering if a paycheck reduction after that. And then he goes into Biffle. <laughs> it, but I noticed that when these cars get damaged in the front, they become like little jackknifes under each other. That, there were like five wrecks where the front end hit the back of a car and the car like totally, ooh, well, actually, totally went a, up. There was a, one of the drivers, I believe it was uh, Keselowski, made the comment of that. No, it wasn't Keselowski. Who was it that got spun... And at first it looked like it was his fault, and the other driver said it was... Biffle and uh, McMurray. Yeah, and, oh, yeah, that's right, it was. It was Biffle and McMurray, and, and when they interviewed, they interviewed Biffle first, and he basically said it wasn't his fault, and then McMurray was, they asked him, uh, what, how come you got loose? Cause it's kind of hard to keep it kind of hard to keep the car steady when your rear wheels are off the ground. Yeah. <laughs> so he, but, he pretty much nailed him on that one. But I noticed that it, every time that the back end of a car hit the or front end of the car hit the back it just they went airborne because it's almost like when these guys got damaged this part of the car is the strongest so it's like a little knife and this just basically cuts so the splitter is literally a splitter is that yeah what you're exactly <laughs> so i don't i don't know just a useless point i guess but um what whenever they go through the grass the splitter splits Yet, the grass is still green after a wreck. I never quite understood that. Did you always catch because that? Because a lot of money goes into that grass. Well, I know, but it's like they, they slam and you see, whoo, and it's like it's still green. Nah, how many I've layers seen of... them take chunks out. Um, <laughs> how, how many layers of grass do you have there? When uh, what was it last year when uh, Carl Edwards hit the, uh, the storm drain? Oh, yeah, that was 2011. That definitely, there was no green. There was no grass there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that was gone. <laughs> I, don't, I wonder... If Actually, it... there was still grass, but it was all in his car. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, the Unlimited, can't really say anything less, the, everyone knows going into the Unlimited, well, I wasn't attached to you, car, <laughs> see you at the end, hopefully. Yeah, I'm beginning to wonder, though, with the Unlimited, um, how you get in it, like, they, it seems like they change it up a lot, and it seems to me like, when they're changing it, they're, they're spending more time with the more popular, or trying to find ways to get the more popular drivers into it. Mm-hmm. I don't think that some of them should be. Uh, not deservingly so. Yeah. And this field was one of the bigger fields, and they opened it up to past Daytona 500 winners, pole sitters, which included Patrick and Austin, mm -hmm. and also 2014 pole sitters. I was just waiting for Dylan to get wrecked. I'm still holding the grudge from last year, I'm sorry. Well, he did, technically. I, I was just waiting, that's what I said. He made it through a couple first, and then he, he got hit, and I literally stood up. Yes, finally! <laughs> sorry. But, um, mm. Danica Patrick, she's definitely proving herself more and more. Yeah, she's doing Like, well. um, obviously... Well, you know, everybody's you, expectations of somebody you're just getting into it, that they can be an instant sensation, well, that's, that's not even close to realistic. Well, Kyle Larson defined that last year. <laughs> it can happen. I'm not saying it can't happen. Yeah. But the reality, and, and the people get on her too much, and I, I read comments all the time about Danica Factor, you know, how she shouldn't be in it, and blah, blah, blah. That's not true at all. And you got to give her a chance to mm -hmm. to get there, you know what I mean? It's, uh, sometimes it takes a few years. Yeah. She went from an indie style car to these. No comparison. No. <laughs> They're not even close to similar in driving. Handling... Their abilities, their uh, safety, all everything is you, completely different. If you just look at them, they're completely <coughs> different. Then you get into the technical standpoint, and it's like, holy cow, these are really, really different. Because if you look, IndyCar, 
Yeah, it does run around here, man. Indy car, cup car. I don't know if you guys can see this, but just the difference. Yeah, open the wheel cup, cup car wheels. is like double the height of the Indy car. So this is and double the weight. Yeah, exactly. And this is aerodynamic fit, where the air basically kind of they design it to have the air no. go a certain way. The cup car is a crazy car. The Indy car is a crazy go kart. Yeah, it's pretty much what it comes down to. Exactly. So I'd like to try both. Yeah. <laughs> You're going from a car that, in the old, in the past years, it was easy for them to flip. But now, mm. they're so heavy that it's like, when you, they do flip, it's like, did that just happen? Because they're so heavy. I don't know it has much to do with the weight difference. Uh, I don't think there's that big a difference in the weight. Well, and also, the, the aerodynamic standpoint. These are a box. Basically, uh, you gotta remember though. I've been watching it since literally it was a factory car that you just modified. I remember I watched <laughs> Got the, rid of the glass and all that. Other I stuff. watched the NASCAR Classic 1979 mm. Daytona 500. Did you yep. catch that? Yes, I did. Yeah, the infield wall between the racetrack and Lake Lloyd was a mound of dirt. Yep. And yet you look at it now and it's like. But back then you that, were really driving a real car. Yeah. It no. Was just you took a lot of stuff out of it. To how many convertibles started that race? Well, one of, I think, no, 1959. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think there was any convertibles in the 79. No, in 1959, they had like 12 convertibles in the race. Yeah, they tried just about everything. Yeah, but the point is, is... You I think I passed on the idea of a convertible. Uh, this doesn't, <laughs> doesn't seem like a good idea. Well, at first, they're Unless like, you're strolling down a road in Florida or something. But, <laughs> but just the not difference... Not on the track. The difference between the cup cars and the Indy cars... Sorry that I don't have a bigger um, model of an Indy car. I have the cup car right here, but... Just the difference is, is they are basically like a giant box that is made for aerodynamics, made for the wind to be able to perfectly go over and hit the splitter this way. Another car could actually latch on, not not so much anymore. But with the Indy cars, they're made for aerodynamic speed. They're not made to be able to bump draft because mm -hmm. the newer ones they kind of can, but those ones, the nose was a little a point. Yeah. And the back was like this little itty bitty light that blinked for the caution. So you try to nose them together, and you, it's virtually impossible. Yeah. So it's, well, it's, there's not enough air being cut. I guess is the best way to put it, or it's being cut too closely. Yeah. So that when the Indy car goes through the air, the air literally goes right down behind the car. Yeah. Rather than giving you that pocket where the the cup cars can get in. Yeah. Exactly. So you're going from a car that has almost virtually no sheet metal like body to it to a full enclosed body yep. which she might be happy to get revenge on with people in the in the cup cars because she has fenders to spin people out whereas that you destroyed the front wheel housing yeah but you're going you're going from that car to another car it's going to take a while to improve like Kyle Larson he was coming up through dirt cars he raced um Dirt modified, which was a body. You know what I mean? Yep. So he was working with the body. Then when he came into the Na in NASCAR through the late models and then the trucks and then the cup, he was with. He already knew the body style. Whereas she went the go kart Indy car way, learned that way, and then went to a completely different car. So it's going to take her a while to get going. So, for those people who are like, oh, she shouldn't be there, all she does is cause wrecks, well, yeah, okay, you go in a cup car and try to drive yeah, right. at 200 miles an hour. I was actually thinking you're gonna, about uh, you're gonna cause the front much. row is what, Gordon and uh, Johnson? Yep. Gordon and Johnson. For the 500? Yep. I was actually thinking about that. What are they going to do? Are they going to start the race and go to the back like they always do? Okay. Like, how are they going to... Lap one. <laughs> Four wide, turn one, and there, <laughs> there, there goes Johnson. And there goes the Hendrick cause. <laughs> they just well, drop does, right to the it apron. Does, it does seem to work. You know no. what, their, their uh, strategy yeah. <laughs> does seem to work. Yeah, but just really all the haters who are against Danica Patrick, she has more racing, hold on one second, more racing experience than the people who are hating on her. Because it's like, the it, as you saw in 2012, well, when she went toward the... the haters don't have any experience. Though. Well, when she went toward the infield wall, what did she do? 
right away because in IndyCar you yeah, can't. Yeah, then you saw everybody start doing. Yeah, that. exactly. So she actually brought stuff to NASCAR that she learned from IndyCar. So that made her a better driver in that style. So it's going to take her a little while, as you see. And of course, at first, everybody was just saying that she was trying to protect her face. Yeah, exactly. The, um, and then what was it? I think it was the following week. Jimmy Johnson did it. Yeah, <laughs> but um, it works. Yeah, it does. <laughs> So, she is improving. She finished 10th on Saturday out of 12 cars racing. But anyways, um, you're seeing her better at the super speedways, definitely. But she finished 15th at Kansas last year. That's a lot better than 30th mm -hmm. the year before. So, she also has Stuart, Harvick, and Bush now helping her out. So, she, she'll get there. It's a big team, though. Yeah, exactly. She's she'll get there and she'll be able to run as well as Jimmy Johnson and them. What have happened to the limitations? I thought that they had to. They can only have like three. They only have. They can only have four, and then you can have a fifth car for a rookie only, limited five races. That's why Hendrick is fielding a fifth car for Chase Elliott for five races this year. Same with RCR and. And that's Ty another Dillon. thing I keep I keep getting it mixed up here. When Gordon retires, mm -hmm. which you can't say I blame him. I'd be sorry to see him go, because I've been watching him for a long, long time. You won't have anybody to pick on. But I'm being told <laughs> two different true. things. I'm hearing that Elliot is going to step into the 24, but now I'm hearing that he's going to step into the the team of the 24, but it's going to be the 25. Well, he's running... The 25. The 25 this year. Right. For, I think it's Martinville, Texas, California... Dega and a road course, which All right. makes sense. But the big that's question still the, remains the same: Is he going to be in the twenty-four, or are they going to I'm keep not it sure. the twenty-five? There, I know a lot of people are like, "Should we retire the 24? So it, it might retire that, the three. Why, why exactly. would you retire the twenty-four? So I, I don't know. We'll see what happens. And the six is still out there. Mm -hmm. you know? Forty-three is still out there. Yeah, forty-three is still out there. It's if you're going to retire any, that's the one to retire. Yeah. So. We'll see what happens next season, this time next season, when we're looking at, looking ahead of the 500 going, all right, and Chase Elliott in that number 20-something, four or five. Yeah. But I know Ty Dillon is a fifth car for RCR for the 500, 33 Cheerios. So you have both Dillon yeah, brothers true. out there. So that's the rule NASCAR's put out there, saying you can have five cars as long as the fifth car is a rookie, one year rookie, like again, but uh, not a full season. But not a full season. Only I think five or six races. Well, I remember when they did have uh, five cars. Like Rash had five cars, and I believe Hendrick had five yeah. cars, and they were just totally dominating. So mm -hmm. they, they had to do something with it. Yeah, and NASCAR said, "All right, let's uh, bring you down to four. Um, what did you want to say? I was interested in uh, getting back to Danica Patrick. I thought she drove spectacularly through those accidents. Yeah, sort of Kansas, actually. What do you call it? Mm. Sort of Kansas. Won, but, but what do you call it? They were talking about you know how she doesn't handle a car and all of that. She is really wheeling that thing through because I watched her zip over to one side, pass one car, and then dive down and get around the next car that was crashing. I thought it was very good. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I've uh, she's grown on me without a doubt. Mm -hmm. um, unlike. Uh, What's his face? Because he'll never grow on me. Don't like him. I don't think he belongs behind the wheel of the three. Who? I'm not going to let it go. Sorry, Austin Dillon. Austin Dillon. Oh. I'm not going to call him talentless, because he definitely has talent. No, no, he's, he's got it. He seems to be in the wrong place at the right time to inconvenience other people all the time. I'm glad I'm the host of this show. What does that mean? Well, if you had your way... Austin Dillon, three, <laughs> crossed out. <laughs> oh, no, I would never cross out the three. Finishing fifth, yep, fourth place. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, finishing fifth, I don't know who that guy is. I don't like him. <laughs> number, three, number three, number <laughs> three. Um, <but. laughs> Actually, I didn't realize it's in my notes. Austin wrecked. I'm not crying. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, anything else you want to stay on? Stay, stay, nope. Yeah. Um... Well, we should probably talk about Logano and uh, Harvick after the race. Hmm. The F bomb dropped by yeah, Logano. Yeah, in a big way. And then but the giant arm what, what, that yanked Logano out. What was the out. deal with Harvick? He, what, thought, what, he, he thought he got put in the wall, I guess. I rewatched it like three times. It's a wonderful thing about a DVR. And it looked like Logano was helping him, he was pushing him. He at wasn't, the wrong, at he the wasn't wrong pushing point. him to wreck him, he was pushing him to. At the wrong point. He was in a, it's sliding into a curve. 
Yeah, when you that push is true. Him. Into a corner. You no, no can Gachi, only no get away with really pushing when you're on the straight. On the straight. Yeah. Which means the back. Yeah, the back. The front is not a straight. Well, as much as most people no, would kinda, like to say, two. It's a fr you know, it's two short straights. Yeah, and you but could, that you can quickly push. <laughs> yeah, you're very quick. Just bang, <laughs> and, bang, and, bang and, uh, back off quick. Yeah. But, yeah, push. The speed, the speed is just push. Unbelievable. No, but I don't know. It was. I think Harvick took it the wrong way because Logano did come up right on him, and all of a sudden Harvick's in the wall. You know what I mean? It wasn't so much a let's push down the back straight away. All right, you help me, help me. Hey, get off, get off, and then in the wall. Yeah. Because then Harvick might be like, oh yeah, he might have misjudged, but he did come right up on him, and it almost he might have felt in the car a jolt like Logano was trying to spin him. You know what I mean? Um, and then afterwards, he just went into Logano, and I guess Logano was like, dude, what the heck? And went back at him. Mm. Um, and the thing I like, and my dad mentioned, Logano's like crew that, member... I like clean that up, what the heck, because it's not at all what he said, but... <laughs> well, um, my dad mentioned this. Logano's crew... Or actually, it was Mike Joy. Logano's crew member got in between them, but just kept his mouth shut. You know what I mean? And let them talk, but made sure... Someone was between them. I think that would be a funny fight. Because <laughs> they're both actually little skinny guys. Both Harvick and Legato. <laughs> but, but also, Harvick never took his helmet off. Yeah. But, and then... If you're going to fight, you take your helmet off. If you're not going to fight... Means, that means he wasn't no, intending on fighting. Chicken. That means he wasn't intending on fighting. Maybe that was a sign of Legato. Hey, I don't want to fight. I just want to talk. You know what I mean? Yeah, because if you punch, if you that for the right time, then if you yeah. punch my helmet, you're gonna break a knuckle. <laughs> the helmet's gonna win. But my dad pointed out that as soon as Logano started to get like flustered, the giant hand grabbed the Logano's fire suit and just pulled him right it's out. A matter like, of we're not gonna we're not gonna get fined and and go yeah. into the Daytona 500 <laughs> negative points. Yeah, <laughs> Logano, <laughs> shut up. They can do that. They did talk about it. Oh they, yeah, they, they, you, they can penalize them ahead of any kind ahead of, of a race. Yes, they so can. So you literally have to get 100 points in order to come out of it with 50. You know, <laughs> <laughs> which we all know is not possible now, but. Yeah, that point would be the entire too. season. Yeah, the point system is very changed. Negative 25. All right, all-star break. We're just getting out of it. <laughs> but, um... Really got to win this one. <laughs> and every single one until we get our points back. Yeah. Um, so anything else on the Sprint Unlimited before we move um, on to qualifying? Not really. It was, a, it was a good race. Um, back ends at the heat, as far as I'm concerned. It, that's what I also want to talk about with my notes. My notes are just my notes. We don't need to talk about them. No, I know. Yeah, it's just one of those things no, that I know, I, but it keep, I, reminds me of I don't getting wanna, old, man. I don't want to move on and you'd be like, oh, one last thing on the Sprint Unlimited. And it's like, all right, back to the other side. But, uh, he did, Mac definitely had a great race and he pulled some seriously great evasive maneuvers to literally win the race and come out with an unscathed car. It mm -hmm. was pretty impressive. Yeah, and the thing also in turn four... They started getting together, and Kenseth just pulled away, and they weren't doing the overhead. I'm like, all right, Kenseth's the winner. And all of a sudden, Truex is right on. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. It's not over till it's over. Yeah, well, without a doubt. Any Truex, super speedway race isn't. Kenseth could have miscalculated. Truex kind of gotten in the back of him. Kenseth threw the grass, and Truex wins. You know what I mean? What did you uh, actually do? One more thing that I would want to talk about. What did you think about the, the coverage itself? Fox's coverage. I like it, actually. Really? The whole, the graphics, the new graphics for this year, the... Um, Going between the booth and the lower, also the new pit reporters, a lot of ESPN guys moved over. Yeah. Uh, Vince Welch is there, Jamie Little now. Um, so I I think that they were promoting a new era between broadcasting with Fox and NBC. And at first I was like, Fox has been with us for 15 years, what's the new? But they definitely improved their graphics, because like... In well, the in the in the past, it used to just be like a bottom graphic. Welcome to the Sprint Unlimited. Now they have like that bar with the two. You know, what no, I mean? is that the last sprint race now? What do you mean? Like, isn't the, the series changing? What's going to be the Xfinity series? That's just nationwide. Yeah. Or Xfinity series? Yeah, that's <laughs> just the old nationwide. Oh, that's gonna get, it's going to take me all year to get used to it. Well, so and sprint is still the Sprint Cup. Yes, I until, thought that was changing until the end of next season. Not this season, next season. So then for someone 2017, else, someone else be, is okay, coming in. Gotcha. <clears throat> no clue who else it is. I still say Winston Cup. So <laughs> I'm sorry, I just can't get used to it. It's been how many years? Like 10, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that? I don't even 
And I think I yeah, went. I don't to, think it was a Winston Cup. I yeah, I think it. I went to a Nate Nextel Cup race. I remember going to a Bush race. Yep. I think that was like my first year in two thousand six, and then next year they went to Nationwide. What? But, but um. Oh, your first year was two thousand six. Yeah, this is my tenth season. I told you that. Tenth season of NASCAR. Well. <laughs> All right, moving on to qualifying. I'm going on like 30, somewhere around that. I'm not talking. Yeah, I, mean, I can't <laughs> even do the math anymore. <laughs> All right, so we'll recap qualifying, then we'll go to a break. We'll come back and look at the Budweiser duels, preview them, points championship, and then speed weeks, do a quick what time, when, what our coverage is, stuff like that. So qualifying was yesterday. Here's the overall top five. Now, obviously, third, fourth, and fifth are not guaranteed for the 500 because right. they switch. But the guaranteed spot for the Daytona 500 is Jeff Gordon will be on the pole and Jimmy Johnson will start alongside of him. Um, that's if he doesn't wreck in the, the, uh, the duels, Johnson, if you think about it. Because if he wrecks, he goes to the back. That's what happened to Truex last year. He oh, wrecked. yeah, that's right. He re yeah. I don't know if it would happen with Gordon, though. If Gordon yeah. wrecked, would he just... Yeah, they'll go back, too, I think. They still call him the pole winner. They call him the pole winner, the pole. but he still, yeah, he still gets the pole prize. Then the white side, he's got to go back. Right. All right, well, those are the guaranteed spots as of right now. <laughs> Looking ahead after <laughs> Thursday, we don't know. Well, but, it'll still go down on record as one and two, period. Well, what I mean is... Even if they do have to go to the back field. Well, it'll yeah. It'll still be recorded as first and second. So those are the only guaranteed spots then, right now. Sure. Um, and then also for Sunday. But Denny Hamlin will start unofficially third. Matt Kenseth finished qualifying fifth. And Kyle Busch finished qualifying... Uh, Kenseth finished fourth. Busch finished fifth. Um, wow, a hard, hard. I think they should automatically give third to the, uh, the winner of the Unlimited. And so the first three are guaranteed. Yeah. Like if you win the Unlimited... That'll just make it that much more intense for them to win that race. Meaning, there's Kenseth no points. Would we know that. Be third. Right. So we give them a goal. And you know then what I'm fourth and fifth. Other than money. Other and then fourth and fifth are determined by the winners of the duels. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that would be pretty pretty decent idea. I, don't know, I was thinking about it. <laughs> just one of those. All right. Well, um, so we're not there yet. So what you call it? Can I? The winning of the the position that you come in at the duels is where you're going to start, not as just fourth and fifth, all the way back, isn't it? Yes, as far as outside and inside. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. It's technically no, we, we, we it is in other words, one. the first first goes uh, first place would be in third. The second place could be fourth. The fifth and on yeah. all the way down. For the outside and inside right. role. Yeah. Not just no, the first him and I couple. were saying that if, let's say, they did it the way he was saying, Kenseth would <laughs> automatically be locked in the third. The third, the yeah, that, that sounds like and an interesting idea, yeah. But right now it's John yeah. Call Brian. Call Brian. That's yes. what we don't have that much power yet. Um, so, oh, bet on it. Looking at the 500 qualifying. Well, you know you're growing because you saw the. Friends of mine are asking how to watch the show. Yeah, that's, so. why do you think I tagged you? I'm like, let me tag him this way his friends see this. And I have 170 or something like exactly, that. Exactly, right? thank you. But last night I was just like, let me post this. Why not? I'm on Facebook now. I don't know. You guys know that. I have a friend, uh, a friend on Long there. Island that's a big Tony Stewart fan, so I'd like to see if he may watch it. Eddie Ness. Oh, yeah, that's right. I saw that. Um, so looking at your notes for 500 qualifying. Yep. Yesterday, watching qualifying, I thought it was pr pretty cool seeing that the last car, which I think was Jimmy Johnson, just got under the flag with one second left in the session. Right? Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. And then they get one lap, and who's going to get it? And I actually said it was either going to be Johnson or Gordon, because they had the biggest draft, and it, look at that, one, two. Yeah. But looking at it now, thinking about it, sleeping on it, during the school day, looking at the, in my study hall, looking at the starting lineups, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. The starting lineup? Or you don't no, like the, the system. Because, so, Art because, had told me you did like the well, qualifying that, system. That's because he asked me right after. Come on. Well, you guys should know better well, to let me think. You're still overly excited? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Uh, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like it 
at the super speedways. I think it, it it's a workable idea at the smaller tracks. Yes. You know, like, mile and a half and under. Yeah. Um, but I think there's too much risk involved at the super speedways, and actually, uh, what you call Reed Sorensen has proof of that. Because the interviewer right afterwards, he's you see, you see the depression on his face. He doesn't have another call. Now somebody will probably step up and help out, like a Hendrick yeah. or something like that. But they'll, you know, Hendrick will make sure that they have to say it's his car. But whatever, R regardless, he may still have the chance to get in. But because of that qualifying incident, you know, it's qualifying. It, it, it's not that important to be. Um, I can't think of the right word for it, but it's not that important to be overly exciting. The race is you, it was where the excitement should come in. Um, and not to mention the fact that it's gotten to the point where it's just plain stupid, because it's not exciting, because you're watching a whole bunch of cars sit in the, in, a, in the pit and edge inch by inch. I mean, it's just, it, to me, it was boring, and I'm going to be 100% honest with you, didn't even watch the whole thing. Well, I was... Uh, doing slow cleanup. Plus, yeah, that's, uh, that's so, plus, I didn't watch the whole thing because I was extremely busy with. Uh, right. We've had a rough winter here. But then again, but, I think pretty much the entire East Coast has. North, yeah, that, yeah. Anyways, I almost feel like they should do this qualifying system at super speedways, just not the 500, because you have the duels, which you don't have any at any other track. You yeah. then you have the 500, so you're having two races with the same cars. Now let's throw in qualifying, which is like a race. Yeah. Well, I think it's like I said, it is kind of cool, and I think the goal is to uh, to get, increase the excitement. Yeah. But they got to make some kind of rule where you got to go. It's as simple as that. You can sit in the pits three minutes. That's it. You got to be out on that track. You, you got to be out a certain amount of time. Of yeah, otherwise it's just plain boring. Um, and as for super speedways, I think there's too much risk, it's too expensive, and there are teams out there that cannot afford to lose their cars. Well, at least with a 500. You know what I mean? Like, everybody wants to be in the 500. Is Reese Horton going to try out, oh, I'm saying it like it's sports, try out for the Talladega race, the July Daytona? Probably, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. But for the 500, he goes, that's my event. I'm doing the 500. And then he goes to qualifying, and which is, used to be single car runs, and then survival of the fittest in the duels. Now it's survival of the fittest for two rounds. Yeah. I don't... I think, at, like I said, at other tracks, like starting the week after, they should do qualifying, the group qualifying, like at Atlanta and then Vegas, then um, Phoenix, then California. But at the 500, they should do Spin Unlimited, then single car runs, then Thursday do the races, Friday truck, Saturday Xfinity, and then Sunday's the cup for the 500. That's the way they should do speed weeks. Because as even Clint Boyer said... And he bashed, almost bashed NASCAR. Oh, he did. He did. But Actually, you know, it was funny because he made the news on uh, my websites and whatnot. But yeah, Kurt Busch didn't. I think Kurt Busch said what Kurt Busch said was I didn't even catch even what, Kurt Busch, what Kurt Busch said. Uh, I, I think he's spot on personally. He thinks that they should just go back to the single car runs. If you lose it, you lose it. Yeah, exactly. And you damage the car as opposed to somebody else. Wrecking your entire weekend. Yeah, and I can understand where NASCAR's like ratings are down because it's single car runs. All right, go ahead. One minute later. No, fairly soon. Next NASCAR's guy, you go ahead. But it makes sure that a driver, let's say Dave Blaney, he goes. He's like, I want to run the 500. He goes to qualifying. He knows that I may have a slow lap, but if I get loose off turn two, I know I can let off the throttle and be able to have as much room as I need yeah, to save it. Have Whereas, 18 cars running your over. Yeah, exactly. And as far as the whole group qualifying, the ground one being split into two groups, I understand where NASCAR is saying you have 49 cars, not let's let's not put it all, all out of the track. But at other tracks, they do, and they're smaller. Bristol, yeah. you can't fit 49 cars on that track, yet they say... Go ahead, guys. 49 cars. Go ahead. Yeah, but so, even at the smaller tracks, they do the same thing. Wait, 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 wait. No, I know. But at a track like Daytona and Talladega, yes, you know what? The speeds are higher. But if these guys are going to be silly enough to go out in a 49-car group, maybe they deserve to be slapped around in the wall. You know what I mean? Because if they're going, hey, guys, driver's meeting. Everybody, we're going to go out. 
one giant group, see who gets the fastest. And next thing you know, a guy in the corner got sniffles. He's the first one, first ever time running at Talladega, and he's in the front. He's like, I got... <laughs> and the entire field is in the infield grass. Maybe they deserve it because they're they're not thinking smart. You know what I mean? Going yeah. out in five cars. Like that's it, one was, thing. it was an approach to increase the excitement. And I think after Talladega last year, I would not even have tried the Daytona if I was NASCAR. But See, was, like I not. said, at the 500, I think they should do the single car runs and then the races and then the race. Because you have the races. That's your excitement of qualifying. Mm -hmm. Whereas at other tracks you don't. You have qualifying, practice, race. Right. Well, the twin 150s, I think, is where the actual idea came from. Yeah. Because that was, what, 125s or whatever. They changed the number only several times in they my just, viewing. They, now it's just the duels. Years. Anyways, um, I think it's 150s. 60 laps. 60 laps times 2.5 is... There's that Belmont education again. Shut up. Um, <laughs> anyways... Sorry, Belmont. I'll, I'll figure it out in the commercial. Um, on my iPod. Anyways. Um, I'll figure it out when I got a calculator. God forbid I could figure it out. On <laughs> I could figure it out. Okay. Paper. We, we had calculators, Dad. <laughs> I, like, I remember when I was in school, you weren't allowed to have a calculator. Only if you were in very special classes. Right. Hmm. Well, as soon as you throw in the decimals with me, it's like it gets all confused. Actually, I used to use my desk to make uh, the fives. One, two, three, four, slash. One, two, three, four, slash. One, two, three, I four, can do slash. it here. I can do it here. I actually used to see it all the time in the, in the, uh, <laughs> on the school desk. Somebody who used the, made all the marks on there. But, I don't know. I bet, I bet your dad's glad they don't do that anymore. No. <laughs> that, besides, the um, counters, the desks we have are like, almost like granite. Like they're, yeah. not, they're not like granite, but they're not wood. You know what I mean? Can like, you still write on them? Yeah, but it's easily erasable. Like, you can't dig in. Like, yeah, no, you, we have to, you we can we write to destroy the desk. You, you could easily take out a Sharpie and go, but then the custodian... But when you were editing, you'd definitely be telling that I'm back because this is going to be a long show. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Anyways, um, as far as the qualifying, I think at the 500, they should go back to the way they did last year. And then at Talladega, Daytona July, and Talladega in the fall, maybe do the group qualifying. Nah, so, I don't think you should go to the Super well, at all, but don't, don't, well, then what are you going to do at Michigan? They're hitting 200 into turn one. And Yet that's what, that's two a mile? Two and a half. It's the same exact size, just designed much differently. Michigan's two and a half miles? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm getting looks from Daytona's both of you. I think it's a two. It's big, but it's not Daytona big. Dan, dang it. You just had it. It was already on there. Don't you know that? You just click down when it gives you a suggestion? I This thing's so used to my NASCAR lingo and stuff. It's like, oh, you're looking for this? Um, well, that's what I'm saying. Instead of typing the whole thing in, just go down and click. Two mile, okay. I thought it was a two and a half. No, I'm thinking Pocono, which I think is a two and a half mile. No. What are you talking about? There's only two that are that big. And Talladega is bigger than two and a half. Yeah, that's two point six. <clears throat> All right, go ahead. Keep keep talking. I'm just gonna try to prove myself right. Impossible. <laughs> but you you're also this may be your show, but you're also dealing with two. Two point five. Boom. I know my tracks except for Michigan. <laughs> so you just proved them wrong on one. That's uh. I'm confused. I do not remember Pocono. I don't remember Pocono being that big either, and I've been on oh, that it's track. Big, but it, it's not there. I don't remember being 2.5. I've been there too. I was going to say, if you want me to, I'll get out my big book. Wow. 223.871 miles an hour, one puzzle. Oh, yeah. That, that's um, IndyCar. I don't think they should bring IndyCar to Pocono. Anyways, we're <clears> recapping <throat> NASCAR stuff, not IndyCar stuff. But, um, I don't know. It's entertaining to watch at a track like NHMS. Granted, they do stop too, but last year, July and September, they did kind of go out sooner because the track's smaller, but it's also a, one of those tracks that you can go out and do a perfect lap or do a 
eh, let's go do another one, and next thing you know, that's horrible, and it's like, yeah. dang it, got it. it's very not repetitive. It's different every every corner. See, I'm confused, though. Right? 2.5 miles, I'm really thrown off by that, because why is it not considered a super speedway, then? Because of its shape. Mm-hmm. It's you gotta slow down too much for those odd corners. Those Corn odd tape. corners, are, and those corners are odd. Hold on, I'll give you the ex exact um, degrees. Is fourteen, eight, and six. You try hitting those corners at two degrees. 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 You try hitting those corners at two hundred miles an hour. I'm actually impressed you beat us on that one. <laughs> I told you I know my track except for Michigan. I thought I knew that track. <laughs> But um, as when it comes to Watkins Glen, though, I got nothing. Nothing. You guys got me beat on that. <laughs> I still say they should be using the whole track. Don't even get him started on that. If you remember last year, we went an entire like well, two hours. Well, the first to say it after he ran it. And they said, why are, why, are we, why are we using the rest of this track? Exactly. But he'll go on. You know that. No offense to you. We went a two-hour show last year because 30 minutes of it was him, over him defending his case. <laughs> Which, don't get me wrong, he's great, but... And what were you saying? That you they shouldn't? They I'm, should. They should. What? You... Okay. I thought he said something about he's a hill. Oh, no, that's yeah. right. Yeah, the, the, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm boot. thinking about the bottom of it. They'll the never make no. it through or something. Is what right. You yeah, wow, okay. I'm surprised yeah. I remember that. I can't remember. Right, they can't, they can't, they can't but, make that the, lower loop. And I remember the thing Because of the angle. Thank you. The thing that stuck about that show is I was trying to find a way to cut that piece out, but it was all great points. Yeah. So I'm like, longest show at Racing Hotspot history, three hours and something minutes. Wow. Yeah, I think That is so. pretty damn long. Well. well, that was a race cover. Speaking of, maybe you should go to a commercial. commercial. Yeah, probably. Um, so on the other side of the break, we'll talk about the dual lineups. We'll talk about the duels, which if we remember last year, Two completely different duels. Last year they went 119 laps in that last corner and the duel, second duel they all wrecked. Yep. Anyways, yeah, right. um, on the side of the break we'll talk about the duels, we'll talk about the points championship. I'll explain our um, sorting system for the points championship for the unlimited. Because as soon as you look at it you're going to be like, wait, what? I only got, what? How many points did I get? I thought you already put it up. I did, but... Anyways, um, then we'll look at Speed Weeks, and that will be our show. So, we'll be right back. Alright, welcome back live here to Racing Hotspot. Uh, before That's the green, gonna find you, buddy. <laughs> before the green flag. Um, so, my cameraman alerted me that we're like 42 minutes in. I apologize for us going on and on, but there's a lot to I'm talk back. about. Yeah, <laughs> but there's a lot for us to talk about because a lot of things happened in the last two days of Speed Weeks. Next show is gonna be even worse. Next you show is gonna be. There's 500. <laughs> Next. Next show, we're going to tell you guys in advance, this is a long show. <laughs> um, so looking at the duels, uh, our lineups, duel number one will consist of Jeff Gordon, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, Carl Edwards, and Austin Dillon. Notice the two, three, and four. All mm. JGR power. Um, then duel number two will consist of Jimmy Johnson, Matt Kenseth, Casey Kane, Ty Dillon, and Dylan Wright Jr. So the both Dylan brothers qualified within the top ten, which is pretty cool to think about. Um, big brother, little brother. Um, yeah, Ty's okay. I don't like Austin. Well, <laughs> there's the biased. Uh, anyways, um, not really much to say about the duels, other than they're on Thursday. Now you got five listed for each race. What about the rest of them? No, I only, I was only showing the top five. Oh, okay. Because if you really wanted to, we could go on to the other... Well, I am a little bit curious as to who's in which well, race kind of thing. Yeah, and, like, you can go on NASCAR.com. I'm going to give them all the the credit there. NASCAR.com, that's where I got these lineups. Um, actually, I got the 500 lineups, so I actually had to go back. First, third, fifth, 
seven, nine, that's dual one. Second, <laughs> fourth, sixth, eighth, ten, that's dual two. Um, yeah, see, that's why I wanted to keep that on my screen because I did have that. But you made me take it off. Look up NASCAR.com and. No, no, I lost that. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so the duels are on Thursday. We'll get to that when we look at the Speed Week schedule. So now to the points championship. Same group of characters. Um, no one added. We're looking at for 2016, right? We're in 2015? Yeah, 2016, maybe getting you, the fans, incorporated. I just need to find the correct site and get all the sign-ups and everything and see. It's going to be a lot of work to keep track of that. Well, no, if the website does it. Like, I know NHMS does it through Yahoo. Okay. You know what I mean? Where it was kind of a, you'll get an email, please put in your pics. Yahoo does all the work, and I'm like the admin or something. I don't know. I have to talk to Jonathan about that. Um, and it, if we did it that way, it would completely change our system because it would be their system. We'd just be using it. You know what I mean? So, um, but here's the, the way we picked this week was the way the standings ended last year. And the reason for that is because I thought the champion should get the reward of picking first, and after this race, we'll flip to the way we were doing last year. Last place goes first. Last first. year, did I get to pick first? For the unlimited? Yeah. I don't even think we picked for the unlimited last year. But no, we did. Yeah. We went into a tie. Remember that? Three-way <coughs> tie. We had to go to, I think it was me. I feel like it was me, you, and... Mackey or Joe Mackey or something. I don't know. Look well, at not everybody was in it in the beginning of the last Yeah, season. it was it was the four of us, including Joe. And then Trooper and Kristen joined on right. afterwards. Anyways, um, here's the winners for the Unlimited. Art had Jeff Gordon. Kristen had Dale Earnhardt Jr. De I had uh, Kevin Harvick. Joe had Denny Hamlin. Trooper had Keselowski. And Dave had Kyle Busch. Dale Earnhardt Jr., I apologize. My mom jinxed you. Um... I'll, the reason why I say that is because halfway through the race, he was leading for a while, and she comes out, and she's on her phone. She goes, is he actually leading? I'm like, yeah. She goes, I'm going to win. And then some, she had the tire issue, fell back. It was like instantaneous. I'm going to win. Oh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is on pair. I'm like, nice. Nice job. You just, you just jinxed him. Anyways, here's how the results came out. We'll look at the standings, too. Art... Art got 4th place and the win, equaling 14. Kristen got 0. I got 5th place. Joe got 0. Trooper got 2nd. And Dave got 3rd. Now, the way we decided last year when we did this, if I remember correctly, I can't rely on you. Don't, you don't even remember it. Um, we had doubled the winner, and then everyone's regular points got added on. But because I wanted to change it up this year, I d doubled the winner, and then everyone else got points based on how they finished. So, Trooper was second highest, so he got five points. Dave was third highest, he got four, right? Yeah. I, yeah, I was fourth highest, so I got three. Kristen was fifth hi highest. We need a mirror back here so some people can see his <laughs> expression. Fifth highest, I got second, and Joe was sixth highest, so he got one. The reason that Kristen <laughs> got one more than Joe is because she was higher up in the standings last year. So how they went into the overall standings, which I posted this up on Facebook, which I will do next throughout the year, was Art has 28, Trooper has 5, Dave has 4, I have 3, Kristen has 2, and Joe has 1. So he's still a total for 28 points right off the bat? Yeah. You know, if you can keep changing the rules and do all this stuff, how, how is it... For years now, you've never won. <laughs> I know you keep trying, but... No, yeah. I am not <laughs> trying to rig the system this way I can win. <clears throat> not at all. It's just trying to make it more entertaining. So how long are any of us supposed to catch him? <laughs> He's got 28 right away. So now... He wasn't even a points race. <laughs> so now he has a huge advantage over the rest of us. I was kind of hoping it was someone like Trooper who... Outright blew it up last year with the points, or you, but of course it has to be this past champion who jumps on us right away. 
Also, something else that we have changed for the points championship is when it comes chase time, which is seen so far away. Or really, it's going to be like tomorrow when we're introducing the chase. We're going to only be five points separating us instead of 20, like we did last year. Remember that? How mm. we did. He's got 180, 60, 40, 20, 0. But well, we're only going to have five points. This way, it's closer together. Because if you remember correctly, he was 100 points ahead of you going into Chicago. Right. And you were like, what the heck? Well, I didn't get any wins. That's why. So last year, it just didn't work out for me that way. But, and then the <clears> Rookie <throat> of the Year challenge doesn't exist because we don't have any rookies. So, that's, um, that's the story. So, we'll get the, uh, the official picking order now. will be Joe, Kristen, me, Dave, Trooper, Art. Um... I'm really proud of Trooper because he went from fifth to second. I think fifth place is her home because last year that's where she mm -hmm. sat. Yeah, but Trooper's down by 23 in second. I don't know. <laughs> Looking ahead to the Speed Week schedule, we don't have the final lap because there's nothing else going on in the motorsports world right now. Um, Thursday, 7 p.m., duel number one, and then duel number two starts at 8.30. Um, so and then Friday will be 7.30 p.m. The Truck Series raced on, on Fox Sports 1. The uh, NASCAR Xfinity Series race will be 3 p.m. on Saturday on Fox Sports 1. And the Daytona 500 will be Sunday 1 p.m. on Fox. So Fox Sports is ruling the NASCAR universe right now. they got a lot of sports. Mm -hmm. um, so... That is the Speed Week schedule. Just to give you an idea of what we'll be covering, we'll have the duels on Twitter, the truck race on Twitter, and the 500. So, like I said, going to be a long show. <clears throat> um, on Twitter. And we will only be recapping from Thursday to Sunday. We won't be recapping full Speed Weeks like we did last year. Right. Because last year we went Sprint Unlimited, and we talked about those. So it was basically like a three-hour show. Because yeah, well, we last year there was, a lot, there was a lot of excitement, too. It wasn't that the one was that the year before? I don't even remember. The one that went on for like days. I think. I think it, no, it wasn't last year. They went on for the entire day. The yeah, it was long. I remember. 2012 that. was Sunday to Monday at noon to Monday night to Tuesday in the morning. Um, so definitely had been a lot of eventful races the past few years in Daytona. Hmm. And it kind of all started with uh, what was it? Was Juan Repo. Pablo hit the? Uh, well, the rain caused everything to just snowball from there. Yep. Um, but that that is Speed Weeks in a nutshell, basically. I'll work on getting those um, graphics on the wall behind me a little bigger because they probably look like white dots to you guys on screen. Um, but, yeah, next weekend we'll be back with Weekend Roundup. And that kicks off our show officially, even though we're really back now. Yep. But, um, so, points championship, the all the racing hotspot news and info, shows, videos, well, mostly shows because we don't have any live events yet, um, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Those are the three, the four social media sites now. Then you also got your spots for um, for the racetrack when we go to Loudoun. Yes. Yeah, um, totally which that. July is the same exact spot. <laughs> September we're a little farther down, but I think yeah, we, people need to know that. Yeah, we wanted to uh, change that up. I am working on trying to maybe get a sign on the fence by where we were saying Racing Hotspot moved. This way, if anybody comes looking for us and goes, "Where the heck is the studio?" they they see the sign and go, "Oh, a little farther down." And well, we have. Kinda, I'm sorry that that got that confused though, because it's no, kind of lesson learned. Yeah. Um, but look, we'll have our advertisement out. We're gonna have racing hotspot at the track is gonna be your head, your party headquarters. We've already decided that. Like nothing like too outrageous where we'll get in trouble with the track, but that will be the place. We'll have like events like corn toss going on, maybe a corn toss competition. You know what I mean? Live music, different stuff, and um, we have a amp now. This way, people come into the show. That record, live record, don't just see us. <laughs> and they're like, what? So they're able to hear us now. Um, so a lot of things coming for 
the July and September race weekends, which seem so far away. But That's a long season. Um, our live event season returns in April. We're already looking at Lee being our season opener. Um, not going to Thompson because they're the same weekend, and Lee's a little closer than Thompson, Connecticut. We're also looking at Stafford Speedway from the Modifieds. Need to get all the right permissions. That's in Connecticut. Need to get all the right permissions and media. Yeah, anyways. Um, so live event season will start in April. But we'll get our this show up and running February, March, and then live events will come on in April. Um, so, yeah. That's pretty much a wrap. Yep, basically. This show, like we said on Facebook, is a day late, but that's only because we got snowed in yesterday. Okay. Um, if we had our if we had our way, we would have been in in here last night recording, and you guys would be watching this yesterday, but um, or Tuesday. But because of this, now I'm gonna basically probably go edit this and get it uploading. Who knows? Maybe it'll be up tomorrow if I can get it all out edited and uploaded and stuff. You, but is this the week you don't have school, or is that next week? That's next week. Okay. Yes, next week I'm just gonna, of course. We have to be a week later than Speed Weeks. Because if we had ne this week off, you would have videos from me every day. This week, today in Daytona, you have... No. No, mm, -mm. Um, Anyways, so that will do it for us. Make sure to join us next weekend when we recap the second half of Speed Weeks. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, maybe even Monday if we continue the weather streak we've been having in Daytona. Um, and we'll have coverage on Twitter and Facebook of the duels, the truck race, and the cup race. Look on Facebook for all the hashtags and how to follow that. We've been linking the Twitter and Facebook page, as you probably saw on Saturday night, um, being able to follow on Facebook. Um, so I think my cameraman's rushing us because he's at the ready <laughs> any day now. Um, anyways, have a good week, everybody. We'll see you next week. Enjoy the racing this week. Um, and, yeah, so until we see each other then, have a good week and goodbye.